morning, everyone. Uh, today, I have the privilege of introducing Eddie Clark. He is a devout volunteer at Andersonville, um, and I can personally say that his passion for the preservation of the history of this park um, and his commitment in honoring those who have served our nation is truly inspiring. Um, so we just want to take a moment and highlight Eddie and his invaluable contributions to Andersonville. Um, Eddie, uh, can you briefly tell us about your time in serving in the military? Sure. Uh, well, I first enlisted in the Army in December of 1975 mm -hmm. and uh, got on a bus and a week later I was at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. <laughs> so from there I have uh, had eight different duty stations within the United States and two outside the United States. And I stayed for a period of 22 years and the mm -hmm. idea was going to stay that long. It seemed like a good fit for me. so I. Uh, retired from the military in 1997. Uh, can you tell us about how you got started volunteering and where you began your volunteer journey? Sure. Uh, after I retired from the military, I was looking for something to do, kind of fill mm -hmm. some time. So I started volunteering at the local VA hospital mm -hmm. in my hometown. And from there, it kind of grew into uh, the local parks mm -hmm. and the Fort engineer uh, wildlife areas and things like that. Did that for a while, and I uh, just uh, the next step was going to the mm -hmm. national level. So I started volunteering in about 2012, and I have been to nine different parks, mm -hmm. but some of them have multiple times. Mm -hmm. So for about 21 different seasons so far. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us how you got started volunteering at Andersonville? Well, when I look for a place to volunteer at, mm -hmm. I not a history book, mm. uh, buff, but I do like to learn about American history. Mm. And I also like to go to an area that I haven't been before. Mm. So Andersonville kind of provided both of those, mm. uh, learning about the Civil War and learning about the community that's around mm. uh, Do you think you have a unique uh, point of view or unique experiences coming to Andersonville? Uh, I, I don't think so. Not more than an average person. We hear about different places like this. But we don't really know about them until we get mm -hmm. there and start investigating. Mm -hmm. uh, is there uh, any stories or aspects of Andersonville that personally resonate with you? Yeah, actually there is. Mm -hmm. uh, like a lot of folks, I have distant mm -hmm. relatives that mm -hmm. fought in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And one of them was on the Union side and he was captured and brought here to Andersonville. Mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that, I don't know mm -hmm. much about it, but it was mm -hmm. interesting to learn about it. Yeah. Um, so you were detailed at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Can you briefly describe your, your time there um, and any major events that you'd like to highlight while you were there? Okay. I had been in the Army for about 10 years when I was asked to go to mm -hmm. uh, Fort Myer, Virginia. I didn't really recognize it as uh, Arlington Cemetery until mm -hmm. I got there. But they uh, have a recruiting team that comes out and looks for people, certain builds, certain height, and things like mm -hmm. that. So I was asked to go. And when you first get there, the first thing you go through is you're thrown back into kind of like a basic training mm -hmm. because they do things entirely differently. So once you do that, then you're put into a company and the company I was put in was called Echo Company or the Honor Guard is also known as the Honor Guard. And that is the main company that supplies, I don't know if supplies is the right word, mm -hmm. but provides all the people to the specialties. Mm -hmm. Uh, like the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, mm -hmm. also the Fife and Drum Corps, mm -hmm. uh, the drill team, mm -hmm. uh, and the people that do all of the ceremonies on the White House lawn. Mm -hmm. So I was involved in several of those, and the two things that kind of stand out for me is I was involved in President Reagan's second inauguration, mm -hmm. and also one of the state visits they did uh, was for Prince Charles and Princess Diane. So those are the two that really stand out. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, with an event like Reserve Cross America coming up next week, um, how do you involve visitors in helping them understand the importance of a historic site like this? Well, kind of both places, uh, Edersonville and Arlington kind of has mm -hmm. the same vibe when you get there. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't really know about it, like I say, until we get there and we start looking into the things. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of soldiers in both, and there's unknown soldiers that are buried in both places. Mm -hmm. But at, like uh, Arlington, Andersonville has 
I'd much rather have like 400 people or so mm -hmm. than our own soldiers. And when you get here, uh, particularly the reef laying mm -hmm. of Cerebotin, is that when you're walking along and you look at the headstones and you see names of soldiers and those people are remembered. So when you get to the unknown soldiers, if you would take a minute and it's just to tell them mm -hmm. that they may be unknown, but they're not forgotten. Mm -hmm. And that really brings it to home when you start doing things like that. Um, in concluding our conversation, we again just want to thank Eddie um, and all our volunteers that make this part possible. Um, we just want to thank you and we're grateful for your time um, and all our volunteers' time and uh, you guys being so devoted to the preservation of the history here and making sure the stories of the men are not forgotten. Um, we hope to see everyone next week for Reason Across America to help us serve, honor, and teach about the legacy of the men and women who have served our country. Thank you.